Hey guys, how's it going? I wanted to share something from a, a couple of nights ago just because it was a, a further revelation of stuff that I felt like God has said before. And I've done other videos that are talking about us carrying other people's burdens and just how sometimes it's a battle not to go looking for what we think God wants us to do and actually entering into what God is doing. So we were praying the other night, and there was a bunch of people here at the tattoo shop, and I was just asking God, you know, what are you saying? What are you doing? And I felt like God highlighted three people, and he was saying, you know, this person's battling with rejection, and this per person's battling with this, and this person's battling with that. And I felt like God was saying, they're actually carrying a word for somebody else. And as they invite me into what they're feeling or what they're thinking or just the feeling of the oppression that they're in, not only will I wash them off, but then they're going to be able to carry the good news of my worthiness to be trusted to the people that they're actually carrying the word for. Does that make sense? So say for instance, I'm, I'm battling with rejection and I just feel like I don't belong and this and that and the other thing. And as I say, you know what, God, I don't care how I feel. I don't care what I think. I'm going to acknowledge you. I believe you're worthy to be trusted. It's impossible to please you apart from faith. So I just give this all to you. I'm inviting the Holy Spirit to come with the truth and say, hey, you can trust Jesus, but this is why you're feeling what you're feeling. There's a person that you're in relationship or there's a person that you're with that's really battling with rejection right now. And I want you to be my mouthpiece. I want you to be, as it talks about in Romans 10, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God that I am worthy to be trusted. And as they turn to me and give that oppression, give that thing to me that they've agreed with or that thing that's beating them up, as they turn to me, I want to set them free. And it's so fascinating. I watch that happen over and over and over again, not only in my life, but in the lives around me. And just as the Holy Spirit continues to teach us how to be led by Him and how to be dead to ourselves, we find the very things that we're walking in is the very ministry that God wants to use us for to bring good news to the people around us. And all we're doing is trusting Jesus with the things that the people around us are having a hard time trusting Him with. And where our faith becomes a bridge for them to cross and experience the freedom of God. So hopefully that made sense. And so as, as I was sharing this with these three people, I said, hey, this is what I feel like is going on in your life, and this is what God's highlighting you really can trust Him with. And it was cool watching people get freed up. It makes it all worthwhile when we're carrying other people's word is watching people get freed up. But it was so fascinating because as God was giving me this word for these people that were here, I was having this flash and I was actually hearing somebody praying saying, God, I just wish I could do more for you. Like, I want to do more for you. I love you so much. I want to do more for you. And as much as God loves our good intentions, I was taken into a picture to where I was seeing somebody uh, after they had already died standing before Jesus. And there was this shift that was going from, God, I want to do more for you to seeing all of the situations and they were seeing their whole entire life and they were seen without any blinders on and they were seen that God had put them in the perfect situations and the perfect opportunities and as they would have walked in faith or as they did walk in faith the people around them were actually getting set free because they were trusting him they were inviting him into situations into thoughts and into circumstances where the world around them them could experience the Holy Spirit. So I thought it was just such a cool contrast between us wanting to do more for God and us walking in faith. Because as we're walking in faith, the Holy Spirit is so are so faithful to lead us into the truth of what He is doing. And we get to become part of God's work on this earth as we're trusting Him like children. We're entering into the kingdom that's a right now kingdom that's available to us. And one of the another interesting point that I felt like God was making that I've never heard him say before was these scriptures were coming into mind that was talking about the suffering of Christ. 
And I think a lot of the times I think about people that are on the other side of the world that are going through these sufferings where they're literally getting martyred for their faith in Jesus. And I'm thinking, man, we've got it made here. We've got, you know, the finances that we need. We've got cars. We've got food to eat every day. And I felt like God was highlighting a different type of suffering. I felt like he was saying, I suffered for you as I walked this earth. I carried your sin as your Savior. Savior, and I didn't deserve any of it. I never sinned, but yet I carried your burdens. I carried your sins for you that you could experience righteousness through your faith in me. And I felt like God was saying, and it reminds me of Galatians 6 where it says we carry each other's burdens. I felt like God was saying there's a suffering that we get to suffer as we're carrying, as God's trusting us with the information of the oppression that the people around us are battling with. And as we die to ourselves and we're not agreeing with those things and we're actually inviting Jesus to bring purpose and the Holy Spirit to bring truth into the situations that we're feeling or thinking about or experiencing, he'll actually not only set us free and comfort us where we're at, but then we become a mouthpiece of the good news in specific ways to the people around us of what God wants to set them free from as they turn to him and receive of what he's actually done for them and what he wants to do for them. Does that make sense? Well, fantastic. So I wanted to share a couple of scriptures that just kind of reiterate that whole principle. And I love it when God brings revelations of just how things work in the spirit. I find it so fascinating. And I love it when God will say, hey, I want you to trust me with something. And it's something that I've been battling with and I've been trying to make happen in my own strength or I've been trying to make happen in the physical. And then I watch this agreement as I'm laying down my life and I'm responding, yes, Jesus, I will trust you with that. And then I get to see something miraculous happen in the physical that I could have never made happen in my own strength. And I find it so amazing how things happen in the spirit first and then they manifest in the physical. And I love that about God. And so I'm going to read a, a couple scriptures here really quick. So the first one is Colossians 1.19. And the first part of it, it's talking about God in all of his fullness was pleased to live in Christ and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. That's so humbling. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body, the good news. But it says, as a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. So that's our positioning in that we're righteous through our faith in Jesus, right? And this is the part that I really wanted to, to highlight. It says, but you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. And that's our battle. We start feeling things and we start thinking things and we're like, I am I can't trust God. I need to figure this out. I need to figure out how to make this thing go away. And God's saying, no, you can trust me with those things. You can embrace those things and allow me to bring purpose to the things that you're feeling and experiencing. And through that, you'll watch the world around you get set free. And so it says, the good news has been preached all over the world, and I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. I am glad when I suffer for you in my body, for I am participating in the sufferings of Christ that continue for his body, the church. Isn't that awesome? And I think I've always thought of those, that this scripture specifically as Paul went to jail, he was shipwrecked, he was stoned, all the things that he went through in his physical circumstance. But I felt like God was saying it's also a supernatural dynamic that happens as we suffer for the people that are around us, as he's allowing us to feel and experience what they're going through, that we might be a voice of purpose as we're receiving revelation of what God is inviting them into. And so I'm going to share one more scripture. It's 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort others. And I know I experienced that over and over and over again. As I'm like, God, I give this to you. I get to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And then they are invited into that place of faith that they might experience God's comfort as well. So it says, when they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. Isn't that amazing? And I really feel like that's what he's highlighting here as well. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. And I just love that principle. And it's so encouraging to know that we are where God has us. We are walking in his ministry not that we're looking for more but that we're trusting jesus with where where we're at and we're finding god and we're finding the potential and we're finding the purpose and the thoughts and the circumstances and the relationships that we're in and i just pray that god would speak to you guys where you're at that you would be encouraged that where you're feeling oppressed or you're feeling beat up as the Holy Spirit redirects our eyes back to Jesus. And we say, God, no, may you be glorified as I put my faith in you, as I continue to trust in you, that you would bring not only comfort and freedom to us, but you would bring an invitation and purpose to what we're feeling and experiencing that the world around us might experience Jesus's victory on the cross and his salvation and his love the same way that we get to. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for listening.